What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be taking you through a sponsored tutorial of Mini Tool Partition Wizard. Essentially, it's a piece of software that really easily lets you manage your hard drives, SSDs, create new partitions, get new things working, and optimizing them for the best performance. Without further ado, in the description down below, you'll find a link to the Mini Tool Partition Wizard website simply partitionwizard.com. To start using it, click Download Partition Wizard in the top right, or hover over it and choose one of the editions here. You can download the free edition or try the pro edition, which I'll be doing here. Upon downloading it, simply click on it to open it when it's done, then click yes and click through the installation as you would anything else. When you're eventually done, the software should open and we'll be looking at a screen like this. So as you can see here, I've got two drives, but if I open up Windows, you'll see that I only have one here. Simply put, because I have a new drive that I haven't yet initialized. Let's go ahead and do that now using Minitool Partition Wizard. I'll find the drive that hasn't got anything on it. You can see it's all unallocated. We can right click the unallocated partition here, create, and we can choose how much we'd like to add using this graphical slider, entering numbers, and of course, giving some info about it. I'll call this, say, second. We can choose to create as primary or logical partitions, NCFS and the rest of these file systems here. Choose a drive letter, and finally a cluster size, then everything down here. Usually you'll want to leave this at the absolute max, just to make sure that you're getting everything out of your drive that you can. Of course, for new drives. Then I can click OK, and now nothing actually hasn't been done at this point. You can see exactly what will be happening here, what's planned to happen, and on the left-hand side down here, pending actions that will happen as soon as we click Apply. So currently this isn't showing up in Windows. I'll go ahead and click Apply here to make my changes, and upon doing so, you'll see I have a drive over here, eDrive Second. Awesome. So now we've allocated our drive. Let's say we want to split it up into two. We can right-click existing partitions, where we get a bunch of options, all the way from changing the drive letter to moving and resizing, which I'll do here. I'll resize the first partition to maybe half of the drive, OK. And from the unallocated space, I'll right-click Create, and we can make a new partition with the second half. So I'll call it Part 2, maybe. Give it a different drive letter, and we'll just leave it at that. So OK, Apply, and after it runs, you'll see in Windows that it successfully changed our partition and made two of them now. Deleting is as simple as right-click, delete, and we can expand with right-clicking existing ones, then extend, and we can choose to use all of the unallocated space, all of it, OK, apply, yes, and just like that, it's got bigger now. This tool lets us do a lot more than just that. Let's go ahead and do what I did previously, though with many fewer steps. Right-click, split. There are awesome little features like this that allow us to do complicated tasks in simple ways. You can see I can choose how to split my drive, and upon clicking OK, there you go, you can see we have two different partitions here. I'll go ahead and apply this, and let's say I have some rubbish stuff on F drive, it's all temporary, I can right click and format it if I wish, change the file system, cluster size, label, etc. Usually you'd want to use this for USB drives and things like, but there's the option. Let's say you've accidentally deleted a folder and cleared your recycle bin shortly after. There are many ways that you can try and recover your files. Inside of Partition Wizard, using the Partition or Data Recovery, we can bring things back from the dead. So this is eDrive. I'll select eDrive here and scan. A short while later, assuming you haven't already overwritten different files, they should appear here. This will search all of the different partitions, as well as raw files that may not be inside of a partition. You can double click here, or use these on the side to navigate, where we can find different files and folders that we may have deleted previously. It's incredibly simple to use, and an easy way to get back things that you lose. I'll go ahead and stop the scan now, so I can access my files that it's already found. As soon as I find something I want to bring back, I can tick it, or tick a couple of things, save, and choose where we'd like to save it. At this point, it's best to save it to a different physical drive, that way you won't accidentally overwrite something that's been deleted out of Windows already. There's a little reminder down here. But let's say you make a bit of a bigger mistake. You've gone ahead, found your drive, in my case E, and you've, say, deleted the entire partition and applied changes. What now? Well, we can head across to Partition Recovery, next, choose the drive, in this case, disk two, next, 
will scan the full disk or simply the unallocated space, which is this over here, which I know was the last partition. Next, we can quick scan or full scan. And just like that, it'll tell us what partitions we may have had. NZFS, no name, that's pretty much what we had previously. I can double click it to explore the deleted files. Rather, I think it's this one over here that was deleted. There's everything hidden away here. All of my different files and folders that were previously on that partition are still here. Windows has just lost the pointer to it. So I can tick the ones that I'd like to keep. And as you can see, when you tick them and untick them, the drive preview down below updates. So finish, apply. And just before we apply the changes, you can see the partition is missing. But if we click yes here, wait for this to finish inside of Windows, refresh. It should be there, but we haven't given it a drive letter. Let's go ahead and fix that. Right click, change letter, let's give it E. And now after applying, it should appear in Windows. There we go, E drive, and it still has some file usage on it. Here's all the files and folders inside of it that we previously had. Say something weird is happening with Windows. Usually you run SFC, scan now, and things like that in command prompt, but you can do that here as well. Right click, and we get a few powerful tools like check file system, which is the go-to for fixing up a Windows mistakes and glitches and things like that, where we can choose to check only or check and fix, where after starting, it'll go ahead and verify everything on our PC. Here, it's asking us to check it next time the system restarts, so I can click yes, and upon reboot, it'll go ahead and scan my file system. We can go as far as changing the serial number of our drives, though the list of reasons why is very short. We even get a surface test that should tell us information about the drive. This will read each of the blocks on the disk, and if something comes out weird, that probably means that there's physical damage to the disk, memory, or whatever else is on the drive itself. For me, I know this is a perfectly fine drive, so nothing will appear out of the ordinary here. Assuming blocks are missing or broken, you can try and recover data from it. If you don't want to right click on the left hand side here, you'll find all of the options, assuming you have one of these partitions selected. Depending on what you have selected, the menu will change and the items inside of it as well. If you're using an SSD, you can also right click a partition and choose a line to align the sectors of it, usually only important for SSDs. And we can do way more advanced things like right clicking the drive, where we can choose to align all the partitions, rebuild the master boot record. This you'd usually use from the recovery screen that you'll be seeing in just a moment and converting MBR disks to GPT disks. If we click this, you'll see it updates on the far right and we have the queue pending here. We can apply and just like that, we've set an MBR disk to a GPT disk. You can right click and choose to change it back if you wish in future. Essentially, MBR works with older BIOS motherboards and GPT is found in newer UEFI systems. Usually you'd only really need to use this if things aren't happy moving between motherboards, etc. So that's why you have the ability to change them here. Finally, we can also migrate from one drive to another. We can use the wizard over here by selecting one of our drives to migrate our operating system to a different drive, copying partitions, copying the entire disk, and a few other options here that we haven't already gone through. Of course, using these options here may be confusing, for which there's a tutorial and help guide linked in the bottom left here. These are huge operations and will take lots of time, especially depending on the size of your drives. Finally, we can head across to Disk Benchmark, where we can learn about the speeds of our different drives by running some simple tests, for which we have lots of options here simple as that. We also have the space analyzer. This of course, after a quick scan, will tell you what files and folders where on what drives are using what space. Say your C drive's almost full, you'd run a tool like this. And upon its completion, sorted by size, these are the different folders and files on our PC that are eating up the most space. This is pretty much essential if you're running a small boot drive and different files and folders are eating up all of your space, leaving nothing for Windows to update or programs to function. This is the kind of tool you should use to find out where all of your space has gone. Then on the far right, we have bootable media as well as the manual which is self-explanatory, the bootable media over here allows you to create a simple tool to put on a USB for which you can boot into using said USB or DVD drive. For me, I'll just make an ISO file. And assuming you've put it on a USB, then you reboot your PC into it, you'll be presented with some simple programs to restore files, manage partitions, etc. First of all, I'll reboot so you can see the check disk run when Windows starts, then I'll boot into the recovery just to show you what it looks like. So first of all, here's the check disk. 
which when it starts, it'll tell us what's wrong with our drive. For me, I'll skip this and instead shut it down so I can boot into the restore USB that I've just created. Booting from the USB that I've just burned, here you can see the mini tool recovery software. I'll click OK here, and we can see the recovery software here. First of all, we have the partition wizard that we were just using inside of Windows, and minimizing this, we have these options here. The mini tool partition wizard, reboot, shutdown, load drivers, command console, and ISCI initiator. The command console is simply just the command prompt, but of course the mini tool partition wizard is what we'll be using. If you see this, simply hit alt tab and we can tab into the program here and use it pretty much as per normal, just without the ability to burn the disk that we're currently using. Just like that, you have a pretty easy way to manage your partitions, even when your PC is off. So with that comes the end of the sponsored guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technober here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.